Kelly Almeida and welcome to Chef Kelly Cooking. Today I'd like to introduce you to some really basic techniques about cooking and how to cook from home and make it easy for yourself. So today I'd like to introduce you to my pantry and my home and this is what I have over here. So before we get started on that, let me tell you a little bit about myself and what I've been doing. So I'm currently the executive chef, food and beverage director at the Hyatt Regency in Boston and I am also the corporate chef for Australis Barramundi and what's really exci excited about for me is that I've been cooking for about 37 years in the industry and I want to be able to do this for you and show you what you can be doing at home and really make it simple and that's the tagline of what I do cooking made simple so what happens is that when you cook at home you kind of sometimes a little bit off as to what am I going to make tonight what do I have what should I be stocking so I want to demystify all that and kind of help you with some basic techniques and some really stocking some stuff in your pantry that you can become a great home cook, I mean, actually a home chef, which, which you all are anyway, and hopefully I can help you do that. So let's get started and introduce you to what I carry in my pantry. So it's always good to have a, a bunch of different things in your pantry, but there's some go-to items that you really want to have. And um, we'll start off with the basic, really fundamental things and kind of work up to more of the, some of the uh, unique items that maybe I've come across. Now, this isn't my full pantry. This is actually some of the stuff I have in my house. Um, but what I, I always start off with is great olive oil, okay? So we have a couple of different olive oils we use at home, kind of a basic, fundamental, neutral olive oil, and then also more of a, uh, a strong olive oil for finishing. So you have a couple of different olive oils available. I didn't bring it here today, but also bring in maybe a, having a, a canola oil or a sunflower oil, something that's kind of really neutral, that has a higher smoking point. So when you cook with it, it's a little bit, it's not as overpowering, and it can hold up to a high cooking. But those are, those are the basic oils I would have in my house. Uh, I got a really nice extra virgin olive oil that came from a, a really nice location that we went on vacation and I always try to find something unique when I go to these locations of vinegars and oils and then spices and I always pick them up. So that's what I add to my pantry. Um, now the next part of oil is your vinegar, right? Some acid. So what we have in my pantry in my house is a bunch of different vinegars, right? You have your basic dark balsamic vinegar, right? Um, but I also have a really nice white balsamic vinegar, which I use often, and I'll explain to you why uh, I use balsamic vinegar, and we're going to cook with it today, actually. I got a Prosecco vinegar, we have a basic red wine vinegar, raspberry vinegar, something I picked up along the way, um, a maple, this is a great one, it's a maple sherry vinegar, which is really nice. Um, we got a malt vinegar, so if those of you doing fish and chips, classic in London, but malt gives a really nice flavor. Then we have a regular plain sherry vinegar, and uh, what's nice about this, it really comes a nice warm flavor to what you're doing. And finally, we have a rice vinegar, and it's great for your uh, Asian oriental style cooking. But again, it's important to have various vinegars. Now, you don't have to have all these in your, in your pantry, and I certainly don't want you to do that. But as you go along, you'll, you'll start to pick things up along the way. And vinegars are really inexpensive. Having a few, they don't go really bad. So having a few on hand is always good. Uh, so definitely uh, stock up on some vinegars. And what you can do with a vinegar and oil, just by changing the type of vinegar and the type of oil, you got a whole new recipe. The ratios are the same, the concepts are the same, but just by changing those little ingredients from one to the other, you got a different flavor profile. And that's the premise of what we're doing today. We're gonna be working with basic fundamentals and we're gonna use some of the pantry items that we have here so you can learn how to use the same technique by change some basic ingredients. So we'll talk about a little bit some of the spices. So red pepper flakes, some sea salt, some black pepper. Uh, this is a tricolor pepper actually on a little grinder. And what's nice about this is that you can really have a nice fresh taste to it. Um, we also have some granulated garlic. Um, and you notice I got different brands here, and there's reason why, and we'll talk about that in a second. But I got some basil, dried basil, I got some dried onion powder, um, we have some garlic powder somewhere around here. Um, we also have some, um, some thyme, and we have oregano. We have a bunch of different things that we keep in my pantry. And what's important to note is that um, dry herbs won't go bad per se, but they may lose their potency, they'll lose their strength. So keep that in mind if you, if you buy a big uh, container. Um, some great brands here. This is a great brand, the Spice House. Do a great job. You get them online. Certain McCormick is the king of spices, really popular in all the stores out there. Um, a bunch of different brands that you find. Store brands are good too. Depends on what you're doing with it. Onion powder, garlic powder kind of really give you a bunch of different options when you're working with things. And sometimes you want onion powder or garlic powder to do certain things with. Um, 
I also talk about, I like to talk about a little bit of this, uh, this bouillon. It's a, it's a sodium-free bouillon, and what's really nice because I control the salt in it. And that's important because a lot of bouillons are high in salt. So this one here gives you a nice chicken flavor um, without having the salt. And that, go, that, go, that goes really well with the chicken stock and the bone broth. And we'll come back to that one in a minute. Here's that oregano I was talking about. All right? A couple other pantry items I always keep around is some beans and some artichokes because now you can do a bunch of different things. Um, besides having pasta in the house, I always like to have some couscous in the house. Um, we have a great store here in, um, in Riviere, Savia Market, down where the, uh, the registry is. They have some great couscous. I like this one. It's nice and fine. Cooks really quick. We'll, cook, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, what's nice about couscous, and, and I'll talk more about what it is when, we, when we, we, we start cooking it, but what's nice about couscous is that it cooks so quickly, and it's filling, and they're really versatile. Um, now we have some wine. I always like to have some cooking them, some white wine. You can certainly go without it, but this is a nice, inexpensive, drinkable wine that I cook with once in a while, um, so you keep it cold, and it, it kind of lasts a little longer, which is nice. Um, some lemon juice. Now, we have this debate all the time about fresh lemon over some, fresh, uh, some juice. Fresh lemon is always better, of course. But sometimes you don't have it. Or sometimes you've got to come home and you've got to pull something out of the refrigerator and cook dinner quickly. So having a good fresh lemon juice available uh, inside the, the, the refrigerator that works well, I'd already squeezed, it's really nice, works really well. We'll, we'll come back to about the differences of those in a second. Um, and then we'll talk about, we have some broth. We always have vegetable stock, chicken stock, um, also, we have some sometimes uh, uh, beef stock, but then there's bone broth. And what's the difference between the two? And I think that's the important to note. Bone broth, well, chicken stock is just made with the, with the bone itself, and then they boil it, and they, they put some other flavorings in it, and that's how you get your basic stock. Instead of having just plain water, why not do something with some flavor? And that's where the stock comes in. Bone broth actually is richer and deeper and they cook it further. It's like a double stock, if you will. Uh, so it's richer, deeper, a lot more nutrients to it, um, but really rich in the sense that sometimes you can't always use it for all your cooking. It may overpower things. What's great about the bone broth, you make a great chicken soup. But let's just say you're doing the chicken stock and you need to make a nice chicken soup at night really quick. It's winter, you want to do something hearty. You got some chicken left over. You put some chicken stock, some chicken, some vegetables, so a couple of the dry spices, and then a little bit of the bouillon. And you go, voila, you got a fantastic little chicken soup, fresh vegetables made quickly. If you use the bone broth, you won't have to use the bouillons. So we'll use the chicken stock today, and we'll talk about that, how that's going to go. But we have all this stuff here, and don't be afraid. You don't need to stock everything here. You can do it a little at a time. You probably have a lot of stuff already. And we're not going to cook with all this, so don't worry. Um, I was, and I, one thing I meant tough to mention is having some capers around. That kind of goes with our artichokes and things like that. But I really wanted to talk about um, what we're going to do today in terms of food. So now that I introduce you to my pantry, okay, and what I have here in my house, and I got to bring it all back eventually home, um, now I'm going to talk about what we're going to do with that stuff. So you're coming home. It's a busy day. The kids have school. They have practice. You got home from work really late. Traffic was a nightmare. You got a busy day. You got, you're trying to put something together for dinner. You didn't get time to go shopping. So what do you do? Well, you go to your pantry. You start pulling things out. And you say, what can I do? And this is actually a dinner that I make often in my house. And I wanted to show you that. So, but before we get going on the chicken and the fish we're going to do, um, we are going to roast some cauliflower because that's going to take a little bit of time. So let's talk about the cauliflower. All right. So you got some cauliflower. You went shopping. What's nice about cauliflower, it lasts a couple of weeks. So you get, a, you get a couple of these or one of these and you leave them in your house um, and you can roast it and have it for dinner really simply. It's not going to go bad on you. Now, with the cauliflower, um, I like to use cauliflower in a couple of different ways. But we're going to make a nice dinner tonight, really simple. Usually, if I'm not doing a class like what I'm doing today, this dinner is done in 30 minutes. Okay, from, right from scratch. Not even something that we have to have um, defrosted or preparing too much in advance. This is a 30 minute dinner when I'm not talking. <laughs> so that's what this is. So we got some cauliflower here, right? Um, kind of break them big, leave them whole. You don't have to break them too small. Uh, the, 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 the key to cooking at home, guys, and this is what's really important, is to keep your, your mess down to a minimum and keep your prep down to a minimum. So you don't have to work so hard. What I said earlier when I introduced myself, cooking made simple. 
So what I'm doing here is really trying to make it really simple for you. So we got these cauliflower, something you can break, okay? And some you can just pull apart. So it really depends on what you want to do with it. This is probably one of the longer items we're going to do today. Okay? All right, so we have the cauliflower. Now, I was talking to you guys about dark balsamic vinegar. And I didn't bring it today because everyone knows what that is. And I'm sure most of you already have it in your house. But I have some white balsamic vinegar. And here it is right here. What I like about the white balsamic vinegar, and I use it often, and some of my chefs make fun of me at the hotel, saying, oh, I use white balsamic all the time. What's nice about the white balsamic vinegar is that it doesn't turn your white cauliflower or any of your white stuff, like if you're using tomato mozzarella, okay, it doesn't turn it black. It doesn't have these streaks on it. It doesn't look nice. So it, it really makes this really look good here. So a little white balsamic vinegar, right? I got some sea salt. You notice I had the sea salt here. Some sea salt. Sea salt could be a little uh, finer and um, a little saltier, so be careful. Got some pepper, right? Very simple so far. Nothing hurts Chadron, right? We got some balsamic vinegar, white balsamic, some olive oil. Remember the neutral olive oil, right? And then we're going to lightly toss this. Now, what's nice about the cauliflower is that you can cook this and whatever's left over, you can eat it cold into a nice salad. I actually use it a lot at the hotel on my antipastos. Just roasted cauliflower, with white balsamic vinegar, works out really, really well. So I got a sheet pan here, okay? Non-stick non sheet pan works really good. So. We got the vinegar on here, we have the salt and pepper, we have the olive oil. So far, so good, right? Pretty simple. Now, this for my own, this my own benefit so it steams up a little bit. I put a splash of water. I don't need much. This is a splash of water, probably about maybe an ounce. Okay, that's all I put here, just about an ounce of water. I have the oven around 400 or so, and just put it right in there and let them roast. So, how do you know it's done? Well, here's the thing about any vegetable you cook. You could have it underdone. It's okay. It's okay to be underdone. So if it's a little bit underdone and not cooked all the way, a little bit of a crunchy raw vegetable is actually perfectly fine. So you don't have to worry about having that cooked all the way. Now, if you like them soft, certainly cook them further. But now you've got a roasted vegetable already going. Dinner's already started. Put that in the oven, right? Next. We're going to make some couscous. Talked about the couscous. Okay, so couscous is very simple. What is couscous? It's Moroccan pasta is another word for it, right? It comes from the northern part of Africa. So you're looking at Morocco, Tunisia, Libya. That's where it derives from. You may be familiar with Israeli couscous or pearl couscous. Those are a little bigger. And those are great. They have a little bit more texture to them, a little softer in some ways and chewier. Um, and also uh, kind of smoother, so they kind of run a little bit. This, has, this is really simple to cook. You, all you're doing is putting in one cup of the couscous to one cup of, of stock or water. And then once you bring it to a boil, the stock of water, okay? I'm just going to put this off to the side one second. Okay, once you bring it to a boil, you put the couscous in and you turn it off and cover it. And literally it's done. You don't have to do anything to it other than that. So we're going to open up a little bit of chicken stock here, right? You can certainly use vegetable stock if you like. Just a one-to-one -one ratio. Nice and flavorful. Bring it to a boil. Season it. This is the simplest you can get. Now, you can do other things to this, right? You can put garlic in it if you like. You can put some onion. You can put some lemon to it. You can do all these little things to it. Or what I like to do is usually at the end. I'm just going to turn this up a little bit. Okay, bring that to a boil. We'll put our couscous in here. Let that come to a quick boil. And guess what? It's done. So, so far, so good, right? Pretty simple. All right. So we're going to let the, let the stock come to a boil. Right? I didn't put anything else in it. Notice there's no salt, no pepper. We'll get to that in a second. But none of that stuff in there right now. Okay, next, um, we got some really nice chicken here and we got some nice salmon. So I wouldn't normally make both, but I really want to show you what to do with the chicken because that's the main ingredient of what we're doing today. We're going to be using the chicken and we're going to make a lemon chicken. 
and we can talk about the variations of it and what we can do with that. Again, a simple dinner, we'll have to overdo it. Now, notice what I did here. I have a cutting board that I did my main work. And what's nice about these little thin ones is that you put it down and then you can cut your chicken. You don't have to worry about washing your cutting board again because it's just on here. And these, these clean up really pretty simple. So you want to make safety first, right? So we got some flour here. We'll come back to the flour in a second, but I want to show you the chicken right now. So while I'm waiting for the couscous to come up, we're going to take this chicken here. And now, if you're buying chicken at the store, you could certainly opt to buy the bulk stuff, which is a little cheaper, separate them, and then put them in the refrigerator, in the freezer rather, in, in sets of like four or whatever, how many of your family. So if let's say five people, you put five pieces of chicken. Or you could buy them, some of them come already packaged individually. This, these happen to be packaged individually. So it's really convenient because when you take them out that way, you put them in some water, 20 minutes later they're defrosted, and you can work with them. So that's what I did today. So about an hour or so before I came here, I took these out and I defrosted them. All right, so I'm just now I'm butterflying this, right? It's a little bit on the thick side. I don't really need to pound it, but I, would, I do want to make it even. So that's that, right? So we got one here. So I'll split this guy down the middle. So now they cook a little evenly, and I got portions, right? So we have this chicken here. Now, I'm coming over here in between. You can certainly buy cutlets already done. That's easy. That's even easier if you're making a quick dinner, right? Or you can just turn around and, and buy a little bit of bulk, do a little bit of light prep work, and when you're ready to cook dinner, it's pretty simple. All right, so these are going to cook a lot faster, which is good. So we're just going to put these guys right here for ourselves. Actually, let's leave them here so you can see it better. All right, so we have our chicken. All right. All right, so now I want to put a little bit of salt on the chicken. This is a key point, guys, is because when you put the salt in the flour, and a lot of chefs like to do that, the salt is a different granulator than the flour, so it kind of settles to the bottom so you don't get it. So you want to season your protein a little bit. You don't have to overdo it, okay? Just a little bit, right? Got all that that way. And now we got our flour here. So I'm just going to let this guy rest in the flour and put these rest over here so it's out of our way. And we'll come back to that, guys, in a second. All right. See, cutting board's nice and clean. All right, so far so good. We cut the chicken up a little bit. We're waiting for our stock to come up to a boil, okay? Doesn't like me today, it's gotta come up a little higher. There we go. Next, we're gonna talk about broccolini. Broccolini? What is that? Well, baby broccoli, right? Sort of. It's actually its own plant, but it's very similar. So what's nice about when you buy the broccolini is that there's not much you need to do to it. Okay? So we're going to do a very interesting technique on this one here. Um, what I like about that, I take the little edge off here because there's a little bit of bitterness from the, from the bottom being um, a little bit dry and that the stalk's being cut off. But other than that, it's pretty much good to go. You give them a quick rinse. I already rinsed them earlier. All right? So now... This is what we're going to do with this one here. It's, it's kind of a very interesting thing we're going to do. We're going to do a steam sear. Yeah, steam sear. It's very simple. We're going to use one pan, and we're going to do a steam sear. And we can have this done and take it out. And while we're doing all this stuff, it, it could sit on the counter, no problem, right? So we're going to put a little bit of water in here. Okay, so from a, from a chef perspective, it's not a very traditional style technique. Right? Usually you kind of put them in boiling water with salt in it, and then you take them and shock them on ice water, and then you, then you, you saute them. Well, I'm telling you, we're going to do a steam roast. So it's a little bit of water, right? And we put a little salt in it, and we're going to turn this guy a little bit on the high side. And we'll let that guy go. So we got him we're going to steam roast, steam right here, then we're going to sear him up a little bit with some garlic and some cheese, cheese at the end. All right, so while we're, while we're waiting for that to come up, I'm gonna get a little piece of garlic ready available. So 
wait for the couscous. We have the we have the cauliflower in the oven. And we got a little bit of garlic here. Now, we talked about some simple techniques, right? And that's what we're going to work on. But there's some variations of the things we can do. When we come up to that point, I really want to talk about that. But right now, if you get a little shot on this one here, you can see that it's starting to steam up a little bit. Once, the, once it starts to steam up, we'll take some of that water out once we know they're done nice and tender. And we'll put some garlic and some olive oil, let them fry up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to show you what that looks like. See, it's just kind of cooking up. See, they're already starting to get nice and bright color. We don't need to do too much here. It's pretty simple stuff. So, you come home from work, and you got to figure out what's going to be for dinner. Now, I will tell you, you could do any of these things as a really nice meal with guests coming over. Okay? So, don't feel that this is only a quick meal. You can, you can, well, we like to say in the cooking world, we can sexy it up a little bit, right? We can, in the chef world, sexy up that stuff. So I got some, some garlic here, right? Simple, didn't do too much of this. Now, when we come up to this, this area with the, when the broccolini is ready to go, we'll cook it. We're gonna go really quick on it. We'll put this off to the side. So just notice what I got going here. I got some garlic, I got some red pepper flakes. I got the broccolini working, let it steam up a little bit. Looks like our couscous broth is ready to go. So before we do that, we're just gonna put a pinch of salt in there, okay? I'm gonna drop my couscous into it. Okay, and now I'm just going to let it sit. And the couscous is pretty much done. All right. So the couscous is going to sit, right? So if you look over here, you can see that it's already absorbing it. Done deal. Now, most couscous, traditionally, they actually steam it. So you just put it over a pan or like a really fine mesh, and it steams onto it. So it doesn't actually get submerged in, the, in, in any stock. We're steaming that. We got our chicken here. Let's take a look at our cauliflower. Cauliflower is cooking good, it's not done yet. I want some color to it. So on the cauliflower, I want to make sure that the, the cauliflower has a little richness to it. All right, so right now, now with the couscous, talking about a little bit about the couscous, um, you can season it any way you want, right? You can turn around and put some lemon or some parsley in it or some mint or some tomato. We're gonna to keep this very simple. We got a couple of tomatoes we're gonna to put on top. Okay, and we're going to put a little bit of parsley. And we don't have to do too much to that. So we'll just kind of get that ready. So when we're ready to service, serve it, we just fold this stuff in. So that's, that's all we're really going to do with the, with the couscous. I know sure there's a lot of great recipes to work with it, but remember, this is a fundamental class today. This is really designed to show you how to work with some basic techniques and get dinner on the table in 30 to 45 minutes. All right, so I want to bring my, leave my stuff right here. So let's we'll take a look at our broccolini. It's not quite done yet. I know, I know from instincts that I know it's not done yet, but I want this to get this stalk here to get a little steamed up a little bit. Okay, and then we're gonna sear them. All right, so now we're waiting, we're waiting for that. We got a couple things happening here. Okay, so let's go back to our chicken here. So we got the chicken dipped in flour, we salted it a little bit, right? We're gonna sear it in a little oil, okay? We're gonna pan nice and hot. So you may have seen this, you guys have seen this, you've had it a million times in different restaurants, you've been, you've been to banquets at, at weddings, you've had it, you've already had it in so many different forms. So what's nice about it is that um, now you can emulate it and do it at home. And here's the thing about this one, the basic fundamentals of a lemon seared, a lemon chicken, and then you want to put some capers, some artichokes, some tomatoes, some garlic, some onion, 
you could do whatever you want at that point. But the basic fundamentals are always the same. And that's what I want to show you today. That's why it's so important. So we're going to let our oil get nice and hot. When it runs nice, and you can see when it runs a certain way, it's, it's quite ready. It's, it's not quite ready yet. Okay. So we're going to take a look at our broccolini while we're waiting here. So these are getting a little bit almost done there. Just a little bit longer. So I, I like to cook with one pan anytime I can. I want to kind of cook in one. So this guy, I just let it sit. It's good to go. Take it right off. You don't need to cook it anymore. So our couscous is done. How simple is that? Simple. What's nice about a couscous, it's great with stews, which traditionally what you do, you put a stew over it, right? A lamb stew or something like that. Um, leftover, you cool it down, put it on a salad. Why not, right? So we have our broccolini. Now it's getting ready. I can feel it's getting a little softer. It's good to go. So if there's a little bit of water in here, I just take it out. All right. This is going to go quick. So I'm just going to lower this guy down so we can work. So not that you can hear it at home, but you can see it start to steam out. It's getting dry in the pan. All right. So I got our garlic. I got our red pepper flakes. We do this often. Um, I found this at, I found, I went to a restaurant, just a really good restaurant, and they did something like this years ago, and I said, oh, I could, that's so easy, it's so good, my God, how come I didn't think of it? I hate that, right? You find something like, why didn't I think of that? And that's, that's what this is. So we're going to put our little garlic right in here, okay? You could hear it start to sear up a little bit, okay? A little extra garlic, why not, right? It's good. Have a little extra garlic in there, all right? Remember, we have salt in that when we boiled it to begin with, because they, the salt... So let's talk about salt when you salt the water. This is important to know. When you salt the water for pasta, for couscous, for vegetables, the salt dissolves in the water. And then when, you, when, the, when the, the product is cooking and absorbing that water, guess what? It's absorbing some of that salt. And the flavor is really good. So you could taste it. I could certainly taste it when I eat someplace and they salted the water with the pasta because I could taste it through and through. Or they didn't salt the water, they just cooked the pasta and they, and they just kind of put it with the sauce. But when you put the little salt in the water, you could take it out and just eat it like that. A little olive oil on top, grated cheese, done. It's perfect. All right, so we got our garlic going over here, right? You can see how it's starting to sear up a little bit. I don't mind it getting a little brown, that's nice. So a little bit of a pinch of salt. Be careful with that, don't do too much. Now, I know we're gonna put a little red pepper flakes in here, but why not have a little extra pepper? Right? Doesn't hurt. It's kind of a different pepper, different heat. All right. Now, this is what you need to know about when you're working with pepper. Okay? When you're working with pepper, black pepper, red pepper, when you start to, when you put the uh, pepper in the oil, it, the heat releases that oil. And that's what you want. You want that, that heat to come out of the pepper, the flavor, but you want it to be homogenized. By putting it directly on top, yeah, it's okay. People like it that way and you put it on top of your pizza. But to me, it just kind of overpowers my mouth. And I just taste hot before I taste anything else. I like it cooked in the oil, cooked in the sauce, cooked a little bit so the, the oils come out and it homogenizes what you're working with. So let's make sure that this garlic here is getting a little brown. Okay? All right. While we're here, I'm going to take a look at our... Oh, cauliflower is almost ready, looking good. I want to lower this guy because I'm talking too much, which is always my problem. Everyone says that. You talk too much, chef, but that's okay. Um, all right. So we got our garlic over here. Now we're going to put a little bit of our pepper flakes. And be careful with your pepper flakes. Now don't touch your eye. Don't go to the bathroom. I trust me, I've done that. Okay. A little bit of pepper flakes. Not too much. Okay. Now if it's starting to cook too much, slow it down. What, how are you going to slow it down? Add a splash of wine, add a splash of water, if it's cooking too much. But you may not necessarily need to cook too, uh, to slow it down. So all I'm looking to do is I'm waiting for this broccolini and this garlic to get nice and brown. All right. Now if I put water in here, wine, I gotta let it steam out. I don't wanna do that. So I'm just watching it really quickly. Once I get a little bit of brown, the brownness, when you roast the garlic in the pan or caramelize it in the pan, it pulls out the nuttiness, the sweetness inside the garlic. All right, so look, 
We don't want to overdo do our pepper. So this is all good to go. So you can leave this out there. Now this is going to smell great in your house. And we're going to certainly keep the vampires out. So that's always a good thing. All right, so look, we got this great garlic here. I don't want to let it go to waste. I'll just splash it a little bit, a little, a little bit of oil, right? Put this on top. All right, let's shut this guy off. Now, the finishing touch that's really the most important thing to me in my family, the most important thing is cheese. A little bit of cheese on top. All right, so we got our first dish done. We have our couscous done. We're gonna put our parsley, put our tomato, right? We're gonna leave this guy go. Toss them around, fluff them up, right? Couscous, this kind of, what I want to do with the couscous is I let the tomato warm up a little bit. That's why I like to put this in here. And I like the parsley to turn around and kind of permeate and give a nice fresh taste. Now, we talked about lemon. Fresh lemon, certainly great. I'm just going to put a little bit of lemon juice here. Um, just because I have it available. But again, showing you that the versatility and the, the convenience of these things. Um, you got a quick dinner, nice fluffy couscous serve this on the table as it is you don't have to actually do much to it so leave it like that all right so we have a couscous done all right so let me move this guy out of the way broccolini's done can you do this for broccoli absolutely right you could certainly do it with broccolini that's actually broccoli itself it's perfect broccolini broccoli uh, regular whole broccoli no problem same idea so you could do this with a lot of vegetables. So that's the technique I wanted to show you, which is so important. You could turn around and take the vegetables and steam them and sear them. This, the idea is the same, regardless. All right, so our cauliflower is smelling great. See the color here? All right. That's, that's done. I think we're good. I think we'll let that guy go. So one thing about, like I said to you earlier, we don't have to, we don't have to cook this much, right? So if it's a little underdone, that's okay, okay? You don't have to really do much on that. So we'll take our nice roasted cauliflowers here. Beautiful. If it's a little underdone, it's great. If you pile them, they'll steam up a little bit. Um, nice to turn around and serve this with an antipasto, certainly as a nice hot vegetable. Okay, really simple. You don't have to do much to this. Okay, we'll, we'll take that one out. We have plenty for presentation. Now listen, home, I get it. You don't we'll have to worry about presentation. You know, you just kind of put it on the table. Or better yet, make a little buffet for yourself, right? And, and just put it on, a, on an area where you can just share. Okay, so we're going to take this cauliflower. And I like to finish it. All right, a little bit of this. And then, just because we cooked it with a little vinegar, I like a little extra splash on it. Not much. All right, so now, if you're a vegetarian, dinner served. You're good to go. Perfect. Roasted cauliflower, balsamic vinegar, okay? Broccolini with roasted garlic, red pepper flakes, and pecorino cheese, and a nice lemon couscous. Perfect. Good to go. All right. Let's get to our chicken now. This is, what the, this is the fun part, and this is one of the most important things I want to teach you today. Is this chicken here. You talk about dredging, right? They might have heard that name. So you want to kind of get it in, and then you want to shake it off. That's what dredging is. Just dredge it, shake it off, so you don't have a little burnt, see how like barely anything's coming off, okay? So the oil's not ready yet because it's not really sizzling, okay? But this is, a good, this is a good experiment to talk about while we're here, right? It, it's sitting in the oil, it's not what you want. We're gonna show you how it's gonna cook a little differently. But we have our chicken, we're dredging it. Let me get a couple extra pieces here. Wait for our oil to come up a little bit. All right, you see it start to, you see, see it start to sear up a little bit, right? You saw it, see the side here? 
We want to have that happen right from the beginning. So it's not quite ready yet. We'll put our chicken in here. You, you, you flour it. Now, we're going to put lemon in here. Today, I'm not going to put garlic, but I want to show you that you can put garlic, you can put artichokes, you can finish it with capers, okay? We can put some wine in it. It doesn't matter. The technique's the same. This is what I want to show you. This is why it's so important, okay? All right, so now it's gotten a nice little color. It's starting to sear up a little bit. All right, now, what's important about here is I got a nice size pan, okay? I got a nice size pan. This is important to talk about. I'm playing with it, right? The reason why I'm playing with it, because I don't want them to touch. They gotta have space in between, okay? So, they're like little kids, stop touching me. They don't wanna touch. So we wanna make sure they're searing up with some, with some good heat, not too high, because then they'll burn on you. The flour will burn. Now, what are we gonna put in this to finish up this dish? So we'll talk about butter, we'll talk about broth, we got some lemon, right? Of course we got salt and pepper, as always. That's your fundamentals right here. This is your fundamentals. You got your, you can, again, this is an option too, wine, we can put wine in it. But when you go to the restaurants and you try um, chicken franchise, for an example, or piccata, it's the fundamentals are all the same. See, they're browning. See how the flour's not too much in the pan? Now, what's important for you to know is that we're gonna sear both sides. See, it gets color. Sear both sides, right? It's too, not enough color there. See that? You're getting a little color here. So we're gonna get a little bit more color, a little bit more, and then we'll turn them over. And this is the first one we did, right? Now, if I was going to be putting garlic or onions or shallots or something like that right now, I would probably put it in about a minute, a minute or two, turn these over, let them get brown. Now, I got one more piece of chicken here that I want to cook up. Now, this is another thing to talk about with this chicken. As you cook this chicken, notice it shrunk a little bit and it gave me some room. I, don't, I want to make sure I got dinner. This is my dinner tonight, believe it or not, guys. So this is what I'm going to eat for dinner. All right, so we got our, our chicken here. All right, we got searing on both sides. So the fundamentals right now, so I was gonna put some garlic and some shallots or some things like that. I would put that in right about now, now it's seared. This chicken's a little bit behind, so what we're gonna do is just, to, just so we cook evenly, and this is important, you gotta cook evenly, right? You don't want any raw pieces while things are cooked. So we're gonna take this guy out, nice color. Take him out for one second. If I had all one, if I had all the chicken in there and I didn't have this other piece of chicken, then I wouldn't worry about taking it out, okay? All right, now, if you get a little bit of stuff here, burnt flour, just wipe it out, no problem, easy. Now, you could certainly do this without flour, okay? So this got, see the heat got nice and dark now, so it's cooking a little quicker. But there's no oil in the pan right there, so it got absorbed all. And that's because we had to cook this extra piece here. We can't let it go to waste, right? So now, we have our chicken searing up. So if I was gonna put garlic, I would put shallots, I would do this right now. So now I'm putting these other pieces here. I'm gonna lower this down. Right? Fundamentals. Now, here's what I want to talk about. Come over here one second. We're going to put a little bit of wine. Now, the thing about the wine is that you got to cook the alcohol out. So notice how it's steaming out. So I put this back on. I put the wine out. A little sweetness to it. Okay? It's also gonna help steam the chicken up a little bit. Now, I put my lemon in here. So you certainly can use fresh lemon, 
And like I said, if you have time or you have it already, you can certainly use it. Which is what we have here today. I got a little bit of the store-bought lemons here, right? And all you do is just squeeze this in, and you got your lemon. Done. Now, your wine's cooking out, your lemon's cooking here. I'm going to put a little pinch of salt. I'm going to put some salt in. I'm going to put some pepper now. Very popular dish that we cook in my house. And some stock. Now, remember I told you that this ch chicken stock is, is nice, nice flavor to it, and you're cooking it with the, with the chicken, so it makes perfect sense. Now, here's the thing. Cover it. And let it steam up a little bit. Okay? Now, the chicken is going to stew a little bit. And I'll let you a little secret. When we're in a banquet arena at work, we, we may sear the chicken to this point, and we'll have it ready for the banquet. We'll make the sauce on the side, and then we'll, we'll put it on top. And if the sauce has other components to it, like artichokes or tomato, we'll, we'll finish it like that as well. But you got your chicken seared, right? We seared the chicken, both sides. Now we're cooking it inside the juice, the wine, the lemon, the stock, salt and pepper. It's going to tender. It's going to get nice and tender. It's going to stew right in there. In the banquet world, it's difficult because we don't stew 200 pieces of chicken, 150 pieces of chicken like that. It's hard to control. So we sear them and then we sauce it on top. So it comes out a little firmer. So it's, it's a different way of cooking. So production cooking is different than this home style. So this here, we're going to let this guy simmer up a little bit. Okay. Now, you're going to get a natural sauce because the flour is going to thicken up naturally. So you can leave it at that if you like. But really to give that more lusciousness and that nice flavor, okay, we're going to put some butter at the end. And this is a very traditional style that we're making, okay. Now, we'll put butter at the end, and the butter has a, a, a dual purpose. Not only for that great flavor, but it makes it a little thicker, okay. And that thickness is what really kind of puts the, everything together and how it coats the chicken and how it coats anything else you're serving that day. So, for instance, if I was going to put this over some pasta, if I wanted to, right, that butter would make it thicker and we'll go right over it. So, we're going to let this stew a little bit. This is not going to take long. So, if we were cooking this at home and I wasn't explaining anything to you, while the, while the cauliflower was roasting in the oven, I've got the chicken going. I got the couscous on top of the stove. I have our broccolini going. And we're looking at 30 minutes so far, right? Give or take. So dinner's on the table. But we're going to make one other thing. So I don't want you to think that I'm, I'm cheaping you guys out. Okay? We're going to come back to that in a second when this chicken's done. But I want to introduce you to my indoor smokeless grill. Okay? And this is important to, to work with. Um, we use it often in the house for multiple reasons. Um, one reason is that if it's the winter, we certainly can't get outside um, and we want to cook. And then also a healthier way of cooking. But another reason is that if I only got a couple of pieces of fish or a couple pieces of chicken, I can turn around and this, I don't have to put on the whole grill. I could certainly sear it, put them in the oven. I could do things like that. This, all that stuff is great to do. Okay. So our chicken's almost done, believe it or not. I'm going to put that out. I'm going to let this get a little hotter. We'll come back to the salmon in a second. But I really want to introduce you to um, how this chicken finishes up. And, and this is why it's important that we, we talk about the butter aspect. If we were going to put artichokes or if we were going to put capers in this here as well. Okay. The capers and artichokes really kind of piccata, if you will, right? It's, it's just kind of variations of it. You, you drain it, you put the capers in now, artichokes, you put it in. When you stew in the, the stock, put the, put the artichokes in there. Um, and tomatoes at the end for garnish, right? For something that gives you a little color um, and finish off the flavor with that. Okay, these are just extra ingredients. The basic fundamentals are the same, right? You see the chicken, take it out. You put in um, garlic, you glaze it with wine. You put in some onion. You put the stock in, put the lemon in, let that stew up, bring the chicken back in, let it, let it stew a little bit, take it out, add your artichokes, add your capers. You see how I'm going? The concepts are the same. So it doesn't matter what, you do, what you're putting in it, but if you have your pantry items, which is the point of this today, if you have that pantry items, okay, you, you can always take care of this. All right, 
So our chicken's done. And we're going to put some butter. So you got a little brothiness already, but it's not luscious. Right? So we'll come back to it in a second. But I do want to show you something real quickly. If you, if you happen to have some parsley, again, you don't have to put it. Parsley's nice because it gives you a little bit of nice brightness to it. And it really makes it pretty looking. But if you're looking to feed the family, you don't have much time. Okay, all these little tricks here kind of just help you cook quicker and easier without doing too much work. You don't have to, you can leave the small pieces of tomatoes in here, okay? Now, there's a practical reason why I'm doing this too, because I'm letting the chicken temper down a little bit so the butter doesn't completely break. So I'm letting it sit for a second, just for a second or two. We'll put our parsley, put our tomatoes in here, right? Let me get this. butter inside here and then we are good to go for our chicken so we got a lemon we got a salt and pepper right now when you put the butter don't be afraid of butter you don't need a lot I mean if you think about it I'm putting four little pieces four tablespoons for six pieces of chicken okay six pieces of chicken it's really not a lot if you think about it people always get scared of butter um, but it's great flavor right it's luscious Makes a nice coating to it. So this this whole this whole class tonight is really about fundamentals, and this is a fundamental right here. Okay, so you take this beautiful lemon chicken, right? Nice and tender, flavorful. Okay, the butter's actually coating the chicken now. You got a little flour in it. Can you do it without flour? Absolutely. You can do sear without flour. It may actually may be a little bit lighter if you don't like flour. But it's important that you don't have too much flour and you dredge it, as I told you, because then it gets really cakey. So that's important. Oh, I probably should mention I use all-purpose flour. I didn't use cake flour. I didn't use all bread flour. Cake flour will probably work because it's low protein. But you might want to stay away from a bread flour because it gets really kind of glutinous to it. But you can use an all-purpose flour. Um, cake flour if you're, if you're in a pinch. Okay, so we have a nice, beautiful, luscious chicken, lemon chicken. Now, if I was going to put some artichokes, the artichokes would be in here right now. If I was going to put some capers, they'd be in here. So you got a simple, beautiful, nice um, lemon chicken, right? You got extra, always got to have extra sauce. Make a little extra sauce. So what's important to note about the sauce is that you're going to use this sauce on top of your couscous. Or you're gonna put it on top of your risotto, or you're gonna put it on top of your pasta, or you're just gonna dip your bread in it. Why not? It's all good stuff. All right, so we got dinner now. So far, so good. That's a regular dinner without the salmon. All right, so we talked about that, right? We have our chicken, lemon chicken. Again, we can add our, our all kinds of other ingredients we want on it, okay? You can put oregano in there if you want to, put some basil in there, you can put some fresh oregano, fresh herbs from your garden, rosemary if you want. Um, you could do so many different things, but the concepts and the fundamentals are the same. So please use this technique and then just change it up. And, and by the way, I like to get your feedback. So hit me up on Instagram, um, hit me up certainly on the Revere TV cooking channel and you'll be able to kind of let me know how it went, take some pictures of what you did. I like to see all that stuff. All right, so, we, so now we have our broccolini, our cauliflower, our couscous, our lemon chicken. So let's talk about the last item that we're gonna do today is our salmon. We talked about searing the salmon. We talked about grilling it. We're going to do a smokeless grill inside, very simply. But again, the point of this uh, of class today is to talk about how simple things are going to be, and we are going to make a little bean topping for the for the salmon. Okay, a little salt and pepper. All right. Now, what's nice about this particular grill is that it's it's nonstick. It's smokeless. Put it in the house. I got it about set to about 300. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of salt and pepper on the salmon. You know, barramundi works great with this. I use this all the time with barramundi. Um, as I mentioned to you, I'm the, I'm the consulting corporate chef for Australis barramundi. They sell that at BJ's. I highly recommend you getting it. Really good stuff. Um, it, it's a great fish. It's an alternative to salmon uh, in the sense that it gives you a lot of great omega-3s. And we'll do a class on that another time. But it gives you less flavor in terms of uh, that, that richness that salmon may offer. So this salmon... Notice I put a little salt and pepper. I put a little oil. Okay, when I do food shows, or I do a little bit of um, uh, demonstrations sometimes, 
this grill has been perfect for me because it doesn't create the smoke. You notice there's no smoke in it. So let this guy go, okay? Um, nice to know that when you got really fresh fish, you can certainly undercook it a little bit and that will lend itself to being a little bit uh, tender and moist. All right, so let's talk about the bean salad. So as I mentioned to you, I got, I got these canned beans. I always keep a few in the house. You can use chickpeas, you can use pinto beans, you can use the cannellini beans, red beans combination, black beans, even black beans in the summertime, perfect for this time of the year, right? Uh, the barbecue stuff. So we have some, a little bit of tomato. We're gonna use basically a lot of the same ingredients that we just worked with, but we're just gonna funk it up a little bit. Um, I also wanted to mention, and I forgot to talk about this before, is with the, with the chicken, why not use some mushrooms, right? Saute the mushrooms. So as you see the chicken, you put the garlic in, you have some sliced mushrooms, you saute mushrooms in there, and you got mushrooms added to it. Concept's the same. So we talked about using fresh vegetables, canned stuff, pantry items, right? So the mushrooms work there as well. So we got a little bit of tomato. We're gonna put some parsley in here as well. Um, and this particular one is, you don't have to do it too much, right? You just chop the tomatoes, use any type of tomato you want, Plum tomato, the cherry tomatoes, the grape tomatoes, the super sweets, the, the five by six, the big boys, whatever you're growing in your garden, beautiful stuff. You get an alum tomato, yellow tomato, you got brandywine tomatoes, you got all kinds of great stuff you can use with. Okay, so we got some parsley in here, nice, bright, fresh. If you were doing a black bean, again, same concept. This is why we're talking about this. If you're doing a black bean, why not put some cilantro on instead of parsley? Okay, maybe put some green tomatillos in it. Okay, put things like that. So we're putting some lemon in here. Okay. So our salmon's going, notice there's no smoke, right? A little salt. Okay, we're gonna put some pepper. Now, I got some garlic powder, granulated garlic. So I don't have to chop anything fresh. I'm making a nice little simple bean salsa, right? And I got some oregano that I'm gonna put in here. I put the lemon in there, you saw that, right? Some olive oil. And now I want to kind of change it up a little bit. And what kind of, what kind of vinegar I want to use? I go in my pantry, I pull out a little red vinegar. So the lemon, the red vinegar gives you acid. You got your salt and pepper. I got a little bit of um, some garlic powder Notice I ain't doing much, right? I don't have a lot of things happening here. So I got a little garlic powder. I got a little bit of onion powder. Not too much. And I just put a nice little bean salsa, a bean salad, right? With tomato, fresh parsley, a little oregano in that. I think we need a little more oregano. Let's put some more. Put capers if you like, right? I'm not gonna do that today, right? Put this, let this sit a little bit. Let's pretend we let it sit for a few minutes. All right, we got our nice bean on the bottom here. All right, so our salmon's working. So look at that color. You can see this is getting translucent. All right, so we let the salmon go. Got all my good stuff here. Right, everything I have in my house, my wife's gonna be like, what happened, where'd it go? Let's go shopping again. But everything we have here, okay, and we're waiting on the salmon here, but otherwise, we were talking about making this stuff really within 30 minutes. From pulling things out, having, now if you know you're gonna do dinner tomorrow night, for an example, and you're not quite sure how you wanna make it, Pull the chicken out of the freezer, get your salmon ready to go, or you bought some at the market and you knew you were going to work with salmon today. We're not quite sure what you're gonna do. You go to your pantry and you start pulling things together and get creative. But remember one thing, the techniques are the same. And I can't uh, stress that enough. We did a, a, uh, uh, a steam sear, we did a roast, we did a, a, a bean little topping, which we could do with black beans, pinto beans, anything you want. A bacon if you want in here, a turkey bacon if you like, if you got it, you gotta cook those. Okay, you put those in there. We got the lemon chicken, different toppings. All things are the same. So that's why when you watch these cooking shows, which is so funny, 
is well, how they not how they do that stuff so quickly you know those 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 competition ones right it's because we're using the same technique 90% of what they're doing is the techniques are the same right is this by changing the ingredients up and and that's how you come up with these oh that was really creative really it's just I just took this together and put that together and that's how this comes about you know you kind of put these things together so all right our salmon's this one here is coming out a little bit better see it's a little springy I'm not sure if you can see that okay it's a little springy okay this over here is firm so just because I want to kind of speed up the process because of our class today let's put them on the side here I get to do this here now what's nice about this non-stick it keeps the oil down it's fat content that's important to you well, salmon is nice and has a nice natural fat content um, works out really well um, and there's no no smoke in here for two people three people it's perfect if you don't want to turn on the grill and you want to waste all the propane or it's winter, you can't get out there. You could certainly sear it. But you could do chicken here, so you could do the same idea with chicken. Okay, the, the concepts are endless. The concepts are the same, the ideas are endless, all right? So our chicken, our salmon's just about done. Okay, I'm just gonna pull this out. A little bit, yeah, that's perfect, actually. So it didn't take long to cook that, all right? So we have our salmon here. Shut this guy off. So, we talked about love, right? I like a little bit of sexiness and love on top of my salmon, that lusciousness that you get from that great olive oil. If you're using like a really high-end olive oil, um, like I said, this is, a good, this is a good cooking oil for general purpose. This is a nice oil to kind of just put it on top and have a little richer flavor. So they both say extra virgin olive oil, all three of them actually say it, but naturally some, one has a more stronger flavor than the other. The stronger flavor kind of overpowers it, it's good for finishing. Okay, and you get a nice oil that some place you went to visit, maybe you went to Italy, and maybe you went to a great part of California, and you picked up a really nice oil, and you want something that you want to finish it. This is where you're going to really get to taste the character. Put it on top of your stuff. So you got a beautiful little piece of, of salmon right there. We got, we, now, we cooked everything with our pantry items. Okay, we got some mix of fresh. Okay. So, I like to say, enjoy. Welcome to my house for dinner. This is a quick dinner that if you walked in my house and said, what's for dinner? I can knock this out in 30 minutes and have this for you. So, I hope you picked up a lot of good tips today. Hopefully, you can turn around and use some of these items in your pantry and, and make use of them and how to work with them. But, thank you very much and please enjoy.